DCMikeTV.com and right here with the uncrowned WBA intern, welterweight champion of the world, Michael Fox. Mike, how you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Uh, back home off a work trip, you know. I mean, you know, we right, we right back to the gym for real, for real. I've been seeing you lately put on your suit and tie doing the commentary. Do you enjoy doing that more as opposed to boxing, or would you rather have on a suit as opposed to a pair of boxing trunks? Um, yeah, I enjoy doing the commentary, but I always enjoy the actual competition more. I miss competition. You know, for me, the commentary is just a way to stay close to the action and another way to study my craft. You know, I enjoy doing the commentary, and I would love to do that while fighting, but I'm not done with boxing yet. <laughs> yeah, that will be a cool deal if you can do boxing and commentary, just like uh, Roy Jones used to do, you know, back in the day. I will be good. But, um, you know, so let's get to the business at hand. Um, obviously, um, Tim Zoo was supposed to face Keith Thurman in the main event this weekend, but obviously Keith caught another uh, injury with his um, torn bicep once again. Um, Fondora stepped in at the last minute, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, general public saw Tim Zoo's profile. And they saw him spawn with the tall guy, and the tall guy was you. Can you talk about how that, um, how you were able to get a, um, the call to go in there and spar uh, Tim Zoo to get, get him ready for uh, Fondora? Yeah, I actually got called last Sunday night. Um, like late at night, I was actually on my way to bed. Then uh, my friend Brian Mendoza called me, and he just told me to scoop that you know Thurman was out and Fandora was thinking of, or and they were thinking of having Zoo versus Fandora. And he had already been sparring Tim Zoo, so he was just uh, asking if I would if I would come out there. I told him, yeah, give him my number. And then you know, twenty minutes later, I got a flight book. And then about three hours later, I'm on my way to the airport. And then, you know, we sparred. The first session with Tim Zoo was that Tuesday. Damn, you go from about to go to bed to where you get on the flight three hours later. Wow, that's crazy. So, when Mike Fox get called in to spar Tim Zoo, was Mike Fox able to just go in there and do him? Or did you have to go in there to mimic uh, Fondora? Yeah, and as far as you coming in last minute, and so was uh, Fondora. Um, how was it, especially when Tim Zoo was already had a, you know, probably a six to eight week training camp and both of these guys kind of coming in last minute? Um, how did it feel getting in the last minute trying to, um, I guess, keep up or, you know, to equate to his uh, Tim Zoo's sharpness? Uh, yeah, no, nah, I was just I was just doing me. That's how I, it's been every time I have went, went to camp. I've just been able to to be the fighter I know how to be. And I mean, that benefits the that benefits whoever I'm sparring more if I can uh, be at my best and do what I normally do. I mean, me and Fandora's styles aren't exactly the same, but you know, my 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 movement you know helps me to simulate being a, a tad bit taller. Whereas Fandora's probably going to be there in the pocket just a little bit more, but you know, the shorter fighter has to learn how to how to get in and close that distance. And, you know, and coming in last minute, too, you know, Tim is probably at the sharpest he's going to be. It's his last week of sparring, like literally the last week of sparring. So he's at he should be in, you know, the peaking hours. But, you know, I was able you know, I was definitely able to keep with him. You know, we it was myself and from Flint, Michigan, uh, a fighter, 15 and 0 named Adriel Holmes. You know, we uh, we both sparred and we did five and five most days. And on the last day I did they did it. They did six rounds. Tim did six rounds with uh, just me. So. You know, I always stay in shape. I'm always in the gym. So it helped. It helps to be in shape. It helps to be always working and always in motion. So, you know, I was able to keep with Tim uh, as much. I was able to keep with Tim. So, you know, I mean, of course, he's at his sharpest. But, you know, I wasn't I didn't. We don't lay down for nobody. I know that's right. I remember some years ago you told me I don't train for events. I train for opportunities. This is definitely an opportunity. But, um, you know, with all that being said, um, obviously, you know, Tim Zhu, Fondor, obviously every fighter has a different punch resistance, right? Um, how hard, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know how hard is Tim Zhu hitting? And do you believe, um, by the way Fondor fights, do you believe he'll be able to take a Tim Zhu punch? 
And how do you see the uh, fight going? Who do you have winning and what do you think happens? Throws all punches uh, while applying pressure. So he's not going to get him out with like one punch. It's going to be a late. If he does get him, it will be probably a late round savage. And um, I mean, but we don't know what Fandor has been up to for, for a year. I should also add, though, like if he catches you cold, like if he catches him early in the fight, he catches him cold, he probably will finish up. But anybody that's betting, if you're betting on Tim, you probably could bet on late round stoppage. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on an early, I wouldn't bet on an early knockout just by just gauging off of how I sparred him and, and what I felt from him. You know, he's going to be a late round slow, he's going to slow cook, he slow cooks his guys and then he uh, gets them out of there, typically.